Hello, peasants. I am Robert Evans, the grand dam of the podcasting scene, the queen of England of casting pods, here to welcome you back to the Internet's premier podcast, the only good podcast on the Internet, Behind the Bastards. I have a serious question. Did somebody bully you into watching Bridgerton on Netflix? I don't know what any of those words mean, but I know that none of them are in the Bible. <laughs> that was such a good comeback. I have nothing to say. Christopher Wong, Christopher Wong is here. This is great. Hi, Christopher. I'm here. Hi, Chris. Uh, how are we doing? I, uh, I, 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 I had a moral and spiritual crisis while writing the second part of this episode about whether I was going to do the thing I'm about to do, and so I'm going to just do it to you. Okay. So, I love it when people yeah. do things to me. We're just, we're just, we're just going to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robert, ha- have you ever fallen down the Gladio rabbit hole? Oh God. Now let me tell you about this, Christopher, because I think about Gladius is all the time. And the big question in my mind is right. Do you go with an original Italian pattern? Okay. Or do you go with like the Iberian pattern, which most people will agree is a superior stabbing weapon. Um, but doesn't have quite as much of the historic cachet because, right, like that's not the first fucking Punic War rep- weapon. So I don't know. I think I'm probably just going to get several different gladiuses. Um, and I think that that's probably going to be, be good for me. But but everyone needs a gladius. Um, it's the ultimate bisexual killing weapon because it's 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 double edged um, and extremely sharp on all sides. And And so I think that, you know. Everyone, we have to stand a bisexual weapon of imperialist aggression. And that's that's why I support the Gladius. You know, OK, I, 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 I think I, I think if I ha- if you force me to buy one Gladius, I, th- I think I would go with the traditional one, because, again, like, you know, you, you're I mean, sword- Sophie, that, that is in Chris's contract, right? That's all of our cool zone employees are legally required to own a Gladius. Otherwise, yeah. we yeah. can't draft you to take over because, Chris, when we have to go take back and burn Carthage to the ground. What are you going to do without a gladius? Well, I mean, here's, here's, here's oh, the thing, you, right? But you always, you always, you've got, you've got strong Prinkapai energy too. So I feel like a pole arm would work well for you. Well, also. I mean, this is, this is the thing, right? Because you're, 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 you're okay. Your, your sword, if, if someone has gotten close enough to you to use a sword, right? Mm-hmm. Like this is, this is, this is your sort of like last resort, personal defense weapon, but a pike. Now, yeah, this that's is, this why is I said primary. you have strong yeah, yeah. Brinkapai energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah and so, and so, you know, my, my my thesis on this, right, is this allows you this allows you to get to, 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 to get a more traditional, original pattern of Italian gladius, right? Because mm. yep. the the thing that the thing that you are depending on, right, mm-hmm. for your life is the pike, and that means the gladius doesn't is See, is the, 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 the symbolic importance of the gladius Chris, is, is able to shine through. When we hired you, I thought to myself, this here is an individual who doesn't go by the cucked post Marian reforms, Republican military. And, and that's, that's why you're on this team because you understand that you need Triarii and Hisjati and Principi in order to like, Oh, sorry. It was Triarii with the ones with pole arms. Anyway, I fucked up this whole pre Marian reforms, <laughs> Roman Republican military joke. Can I just say by getting the stop. kind of infantry Robert, you were supposed to be wrong. Yes. Stop talking. Chris episode. Go. Okay, okay so Gladio, sorry. All right, Gladio, yeah. How, 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 how much do you know about this? So, yeah, I mean, a, a modest amount. Like, Gladio was the CIA being like, oh, no, uh, this Italy and some other areas might vote for leftists, so we should set up a series of stay-behind networks to repeatedly murder left-wing media and political and organizing figures uh, and wage what is effectively like an extended insurgent campaign in countries that are quote unquote allies of ours on paper. Yeah, that's, that's pretty well. Okay. That, that, that's most of it. I, uh, there's, there's a thing on Twitter where if you mention this about that, there, there's like a oh, yeah. segment of Twitter. <laughs> this that is one of a number insane. of things you don't yeah. want to have a conversation about on the Twitters. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, okay, we're, 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 we're going to get more into the part of this. that involves the rogue Masonic lodge in a bit. Um, now. Okay. Yeah. So, so, this is this is the the yeah the the, the the sort of yeah Gladio is the code name specifically of, of the Italian version of these stay behind networks. There's there's these things are they're originally established by Allied command after so World War II and then they get armed and trained by the CIA and you know the, the yeah the theory behind this right is that like okay if the USSR invades Europe uh, the Allies are like well we're gonna lose because the USSR is a better land army than we do. Um, you know, but the theory is that they're gonna have this network of like guerrilla units in place to start an anti-communist yeah, resistance. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to read the actual, I'm going to read from uh, the, the, the National Security Directive 10-2 that authorized this whole thing. So it authorizes a vast mm-hmm. program of propaganda economic warfare, preventative direct action, including sabotage, anti-sabotage, demolition, and evacuation measures, subversion against hostile states, including as, uh, assistance to underground resistance movements, guerrillas, refugee liberation programs, and support of indigenous anti-communist elements to be done so that any U.S. government responsibility for them is not evidence to unauthorized persons and that if uncovered, the U.S. government can plausibly deny any responsibility. So that the the U the U S in the foundation. How many thing. different like things that are official government documents <laughs> include the phrase "so the U S can possibly <laughs> deny responsibility"? Yeah, it's, it's great. That's, that's just good. That's just and, good for us. You know, I mean, th- this this is how this is how you know the program is going to go incredibly well, and there's going to be zero problems with it ever. Yep. And yeah, so there, there's a bunch of these things across Europe. They're in, there's one in Belgium, they're in Denmark, they're in France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Spain, Turkey, Austria, Finland, Sweden, and Switzerland, and also the UK. I don't know why the UK is, I didn't mention this. Make I'm, I'm fine here. with that one. I'm just in generally okay with us fucking with the UK, but yeah, everywhere else, it, everywhere this else is like, yeah. yeah. So they, they kill like an enormous number of people. Um, yes. they're, they're composed of a lot of these people are literally just fascists who they were like, hey, you don't <laughs> like sure communists. Are. We'll hand you a gun. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's, there's, there's a bunch of anti-communists. They have, you know, they have people in the state security services. So you've got like your soldiers, your cops, your spies. They're all involved in this. And, you know, you can already see the sort of similarities to Condor from last episode, right? Like th- this, this is a parallel network of soldiers, spies and paramilitaries that the regular government, A, doesn't know about and B, is is being run sort of is 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 being like the internationally coordinated covertly and th- these networks are uh, heavily armed by weapons caches that are spread around all of these countries and th- these things have they've got guns in them they've got explosives they've got borders okay don't let's i feel like you said weapons caches like it like in a negative way and I just don't think that's very fair. Well, you know, there's, 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 look, the only way to stop a bad guy with a weapons cache is a good exactly. guy with a weapons cache. Exactly, is a good guy with a weapons yeah. cache. But, but unfortunately, and this is, this is the real problem here, is that uh, the, the Soviet Union were pussies for the entire Cold War. It didn't give everyone weapons caches. So they we're, did we're not. really I mean, only that, dealing that with is, bad guys that is, with weapons that caches. That is what everybody it's, says about the Soviet Union. Yeah. They did not give enough people weapons caches. No, that is what I say about it did. It was coward, Union. absolute coward stuff. Mm-hmm. So okay, so come these on, are, are, yeah. You, look, you you gotta you gotta give you gotta give you guys something, man. Yeah, like, the you U.S. is just handing them... out scorpion machine pistols like they're fucking candy in Europe. Yeah, like, and, like come on, you gotta like the USSR is like making you buy their AK forty sevens. Like come on, we don't have any money. Where, where are we gonna buy an AK? Ah, it's, it's terrible stuff. Now, okay, now, nominally the, the, these things are supposed to fight like a communist invasion, but. Like the the actual thing they're there to do is to just like fight any leftists of any kind from like yeah, electoral yeah. social Demo- democrats to like anarchists. And again, th- I mean this this is this is very much a proto operation Condor. It's the same goals, the same tactics, the same command structure. And like so, the command structure that's left behind in Greece, for example, uh, it becomes known as Prometheus, and it pl- it plays a huge role both in the Greek Civil War and also in Greece's 1970, uh, 1967 right wing military coup. We never talk about that. Yeah. We never do. It, it's really like the, the whole the whole history of Greece from that period to the military coup. It's like, yeah, like Churchill. World War Two is happening. And then Churchill was like, oh, my God, the communists are going to win. And so he just like put the Nazis back in charge and Nazis started mm-hmm. doing the Holocaust again. Yeah, and it's it, it's, uh, it's there's <sighs> there's a very fun history of Churchill in Greece. That is. <sighs> yeah, fine. It's, it's it's fine and good, and nothing bad ever happened from it. There wasn't another military dictatorship. They didn't like yeah kill enormous numbers of people, and and you know th- there's also like there's stuff here. P- part of what's going on here is, uh, I- I'm I'm just gonna read this from Mick Sherry. Uh, Washington insisted on a secret clause in the North Atlantic Treaty. This is the treaty that forms NATO requiring the secret services of all joining nations to establish their own branches of the secret army and oppose communist influence, even if the population voted for communists in free elections. You love which to is see great. It. <laughs> freedom no, that's, and democracy, that's, that's, people. That's, that's, that's good shit. That's good freedom. Nothing says freedom and democracy like secret armies. Yeah. Well, I should mention, it, it's not formally part of... of uh, 
Like it, it's not formally like one of the things that's considered part of Gladio or like the state behind networks, but they do yeah. literally the same thing in Japan too. Yeah. That, that's where the Japanese ruling party, modern ruling party comes from. And uh, oh boy, do these state behind networks oppose communism and free elections that they, they, they rig elections in Greece and the rig elections in Italy. So the communists can't win. And, but you know, like while all this is happening right on a macro <laughs> level, what is happening here is that the CIA is giving a bunch of Nazis guns and high explosives. And when I say Nazis, like what I mean is that to take a random example, the state behind network in West Germany literally hired Klaus Barbie and was composed of ex-members oh, of the SS. We have talked about that because Klaus Barbie was also integral in the creation of the modern CIA for some similar reasons. Yeah. And Good then guy. also, and then also, also, also showed up doing a cocaine coup funded by the Moonies and a bunch of other world. Okay, okay, okay. People okay. in Bolivia. That, that 1980. one was fine. <laughs> that was, it, was, it was good. It was good and fine. Um, yeah, and in, in Italy in particular, this whole like give fascist guns thing uh, goes exactly as badly as you would expect it to. Um, in, in 1972, someone sets off a car bomb in a small Italian village called Petiano, and, and originally this is blamed on the Red Brigades, who are this this sort of like leftist like urban guerrilla group that later turns out to be infiltrated to like all hell. But we're we're not actually going to get into the Red Brigades here because if we did, and if 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 I actually had done the moral kidnapping of this episode, this episode would be like thirty five hours long, and also I'd be found dead in my driveway, like at about mm. three weeks yeah, from now. You'd be you'd be found covered in shrapnel made out of pasta. Yeah, because it, it's Italians. I, you know the, the thing about this, like I I am joking about this, but there, there legitimately were like a a not insignificant number of people who tried to write about this and were killed. So yeah, sure. <laughs> it's Found great. with Gabagool jub jammed yeah. down their throat. Now choked okay, to so death on a, what's something else that's Italian? Um, um, uh, um, pepperoni, uh, pepperoni. They're gonna, they're yeah, exactly. murder me for yeah. This. Murdered by b- being historically bad at fielding cavalry. Uh, that's also very Italian. Um, that was a yeah, Roman I'm, Empire joke. I'm really terrible. Prou- at I'm really proud of you for not bringing up spicy meatball. Ah, oh, the spicy <laughs> meatball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, my, my 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 original plan for this was I was just going to read every single name in an Italian accent and do no other Italian jokes. But because luckily I have Robert here to do the Italian jokes. For oh, me. I'm I my life is an <laughs> Italian joke. Based. Mm-hmm. And it is based bread Fuck pilled, em. I guess. Pasta uh, pilled? Fucking it's I, terrible I, 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 Italian I, bread. Yeah. So okay, so anyway. there's this bombing, right? It kills it kills some people. It specifically, it's like targeted against the police. And okay, so so the the, the red brigades get blamed for this, and the immediate response to the Italian government is they they do a mass crackdown on the left. They arrest hundreds of communists. And now it turns out, Robert, uh, that bombing not done by the red brigades. Oh, Instead. Good actually done by a fascist group named Ordine Norevo, or New Order. Uh, the, the guy responsible for this, Vincenti Visoguera, was tried by an okay. Italian judge in the 80s, <laughs> and uh, he uh, revealed some stuff. And by some stuff, I mean uh, it turns out that the bombing was done by C4 taking from Gladio weapons caches, which the prosecutors uh, knew about because they immediately covered it up to blame someone else. See, that's very Italian of them. Yeah. I mean, although, Chris, you do have to take into account, given the way C4 looks, this may have been an accidental bombing because it looks a lot like pasta dough. They might have just been trying to make, they might have just been making a ravioli, you know? Sometimes you, you make the ravioli and you blow up the carbonara. <laughs> oh, no. oh, Italians. <sighs> so, so it turns out the, 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 the bombing... Yeah, so it's, it's, done with, it's done with Gladio weapons caches. It almost certainly was directed by the Italian government. And... Sure. Th- th- this 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 becomes the opening salvo almost known as a strategy of tension, which is the government carrying out terrorist attacks from the fascist right and then staging uh, attacks in, that are claimed to be from the communist and anarchist left. So you get people, you know, scared enough so they'll trust the government and reject the yeah. incredibly powerful Italian left, which they spend this whole time like smearing as terrorists. Yes, and, and this 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 has all come down to us today in the fact that anytime people on the left do something cool and illegal. Uh, you get a bunch of assholes on Twitter being like, this is an op- Operation yeah. Gladio and, style false flag. You know, yeah, the, the, bullshit, the, the, thing, the thing I need to point out about this to people who believe this, if, if you go back and look at the history of what these guys are doing, it wasn't like they weren't like graffitiing someone's driveway. Like 
They were doing train bombings. Yeah, they were right? bombing. They were massacring civilians. They killed like civilians. hundreds of people. Like, like the guys, guys, the, 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 the level of thing that they're doing is just it's not even remotely applicable to what's it's happening stuff now. stuff that's objectively bad as opposed to stuff that's objectively based. Yeah, like they don't they don't do anything cool. They only they only yeah. just they, the only thing the, the thing that they do specifically in order to discredit the left is kill civilians. Mm-hmm. And so. I don't know. Maybe, maybe like, look, if, if, if you want to get all conspiracy brain about it, like, I don't know, maybe For in record, five years, massacring civilians, bad, no matter what side of the political yeah, yeah. spectrum you're and on. Like, like, okay. If, if the, the, the other thing I want to point out mm-hmm. is that like, okay, so the, there were a bunch of conspiracy theorists in Italy in, in, in the seventies and eighties when this is happening, when this is happening. Right. And their cons- the conspiracy theory they have is that the red brigades don't exist. And that, like they're entirely fictitious and the government has made up a group of fake terrorists. And this is not true at all. The Red Brigades were a real thing. They were they got it. All the conspiracy theorists who were living in like the most conspiracy ridden part of like the history ever all got it completely wrong. So you guys also don't have it right. And the things that are this is we're 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 not we're not literally living in exactly the same thing of American Gladio. It, it's not mm-hmm. the same thing. Please stop. Oh, by the way, also the uh, Italian Red Brigades, not named the Red Brigades because of communism, but because of pasta sauce. Yeah, definitely. Uh-huh. The, they were also called the Marinara Brigades. Yeah, the Marinara Brigades. For, That's what for everyone, because, what because locally known as. Yeah, yeah. So it's because they turn people into chunky marinara. Mm-hmm. So mm, delicious. V- Vichy Guerra, who's who's the guy who who is put on trial for this bombing claims that new order is actually a cat's ball for NATO and the CIA, which like, okay. So like partially he's doing this because he's been arrested for a bombing and he's like, how do I get out of this? Ah, uh, the CIA told us to, but you know, but also on the other hand, right. Uh, the bombs that he, he, he used to make this are from CIA gladio caches. So uh, draw your own conclusions about who's responsible for this and how we got a hold of a bunch of weapons from uh, CIA NATO stay behind network caches. Um, and, and it turns out that that new order and another fascist group called Avangardia Nationale or National oh, but Vanguard. The pasta, <laughs> Alfredo. Yeah, th- these people are also heavily involved in Operation Condor. And mm-hmm. when I say heavily involved, what I mean is that uh so one of the one of these one of the me- the members of, actually I think he's a member of both groups, um, is this guy named Stefano De Lecciari. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea. That his name has two eyes yeah. in it, and there's a vowel yeah, in the middle. It's, I, look, it's Italian names, incomprehensible not real names. Yeah. So th- this guy Pinochet met with him personally to talk about the assassination that he was trying to do. Um, and one of the, and the assassination that he's trying to do is the failed assassination of Christian, of Christian Democratic politician Bernardo Leighton. Um, and it, this the Christian Democrats are kind of weird here because like the, the Chilean Christian Democrats originally support the coup against Allende. But then, like, Pinochet takes over, and they were like, this whole Pinochet thing, maybe it's bad. And so they, they, they turn against Pinochet, um, and, and here, 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 here's McSherry and what happened next. Avangardia Nacionale and Ordino Nuevo also collaborated in Condor operations. Assassins from Avangardia Nacionale, the terrorist organization of Italian neo-fascist Stefano De Luciani, attempted the latent assassination in Rome. They left the couple for dead after gun after gunning them down in the street. The couple was severely wounded but survived. Aldo Tresai, the leader of Order, um, Ordine Nuevo and Avangardia Nacionale, boasted that uh, De Luciani and his his uh, Italian fascists coordinated with the Chilean uh, National Intelligence Directorate, as well as the secret services of the Franco regime in Spain, and admitted that his forces carried out the latent attack at Dino's request. So uh, Stefano de uh, uh, Stefano de Leciale, by the way, uh, so while wanted by the Italian police for this assassination, shows up at the Latin America uh, Anti-Communist Confederation's meeting in Buenos Aires in 1980. And th- this is like a recurring theme for, for, for these people, for Italian t- fascist terrorists. One of New Order's like highest ranking members was this guy named Elio Massagardi, who's like he did a bunch of terrorist attacks and like bank robberies in Italy, both Italy and uh, France. And so he flees to Paraguay after uh, a, a, another judge attempts to sort of like prosecute these new order guys. And uh, he winds up getting shot like while he's in his, his car is stuck in a traffic jam in Rome. And at, at this point, um, uh, Elio Massagari just like runs away and you know, he goes to Paraguay and then he shows up as part of the European delegation of the World Anti-Communist League's meeting in Asuncion in 1979. And again, while he's at this meeting, he is act he's like near the top of the Interpol most wanted list. And he's just he's just at this meeting, like chilling. 
Now, the, the, the other part of what's going on here, and this is the part that like actually breaks people's brains, is an organization called the P2 Masonic Lodge, or Propaganda Due. So, oh god, I, okay, so, so I, I should make this clear from the top. Uh, P2 is a rogue Masonic Lodge that was expelled by the Masons before they do the stuff we're about to talk about. Um, and it's, it's ran by this guy named Licio Gueli, who's like, he's a, an old, old school fascist. Like, this, this is a guy who, at 17 years old, went to, went to Spain and fought for Franco in the Spanish Civil War, and then, like, joined the SS. And P2 operates as this kind of, like, shadow state inside the Italian state. It has, like, a bunch of members in sort of various parts of the Italian government, including the military and the intelligence services. It buys the country's largest newspaper. And by, like, the late 70s and, like, the very beginning of the 80s, it's basically running the Italian state. But hilariously, in 1981, the Italian police are raiding this guy's house for like completely unrelated corruption stuff, and they find a briefcase that just literally has the PT organization's plan to take over the government in it. And they also find uh, uh, in Licio Guelli's like, ha- like apartment when they raid it later, uh, they find a list that has everyone in the organization, <laughs> and the people on this in, in this in this thing are wild. There, there's the heads and deputy heads of four different Italian intelligence services, uh, the the chief of the general staff of the army. There's a bunch of people who were like very senior members of, of the Argentinian junta. Um, the guy, yeah, uh, the uh, Stefano Deliciani, the fascist we've been talking about who showed up at the World of the Communist League meeting, he's in this. Uh, the guy who founded AAA, that the Argentinian death squad from last episode, also in this. And then the most famous member of, the, of this group is a guy named Silvio Berlusconi. Oh! Uh, who was, yeah, yeah, it's great. Great. He, he was part of the, the, the secret rogue Masonic Lodge that uh, took control of the government and was like planning to do a fascist uh, coup and take everything over to destroy communism. And uh, to, 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 to get an indication, if you, if you want like a sneak peek of where this is eventually going and who wins this whole war, uh, he is a, uh, Silvio Berlusconi was the longest serving prime minister in the history of Italy. Well, okay, po- post way. Longest serving prime minister after Benito Mussolini. Yeah, so th- this, this is going great. Uh, the P2 stuff is like all over the place. It, it's really hard to sort out like who exactly did what. Like there are evidence from some of these trials that are like happening now, like in 2022. Evidence is still coming out. Uh, what we can say is that they, they seem to have been involved in the 1980 Bologna train bombing, which killed 85 people and injured another 200 people. And because it's a bombing, it was originally initially blamed by anarchists. But uh, lo and behold, evidence now suggests it was actually fascists using Gladio explosives backed by P2s, contacts, and in Italian intelligence. There's like... They, they do other stuff. That they're, they're, there's decent evidence. They planted a fake story about Jimmy Carter's brother meeting PLO leader Yasser Arafat in the U.S. press to try to get uh, Ronald Reagan elected. Oh, yeah. I mean, and really, they could have just, well, we'll talk about the bank, the crime bank that Jimmy Carter was affiliated yeah. with later. But that's another story for another day. Well, spe- spe- speaking of crime banks, I'm not going to talk about, um, I'm, I'm not going to talk about Branco, Banco Ambrosiano and Robert Calvi, the man known as God's banker, turning up dead under Blackfriars Bridge. Because if I talk about this, I'll be here until like 2077 and also 3000 people will just like fall from the ceiling with knives and assassinate me. So, but what? What, what, what I can say about this is that Gladio, you know, as much as people sort of exceptionalize what Gladio is, Gladio is basically a mirror version of, of the U.S.'s own parallel sort of stay behind networks abroad. And these are things like the, the First Observation Group, which is a, a U.S. Special Forces group that was deployed to do terrorism in South Vietnam, like back in the 50s, when the U.S. was still, you know, doing this whole thing that they claimed they weren't in South Vietnam. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, Robert- is literally, yeah, anyway, whatever. <laughs> Robert, uh, you know what else is a model for fascist death squads? Oh, uh, well, this podcast, actually. Sophie <laughs> and I, when Sophie and I sat down to plan how Behind the Bastards was going to work, you know, first question we asked was like, how are we going to organize the division of labor to make this work? And both at the same time, it was amazing. Instantly looked each other right in the eye and said at the same time, fascist death squads. And that's why we still use that organizational method today for this show. Yeah, yeah. And this, 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 this is, this is mm-hmm. why we're sponsored by uh, and the mm-hmm. that's right. That's right. Primarily um, uh, elements of the um, all united in operation of fascist death squads, which we support 100 percent here at Behind the Bastards, the Dead Squad podcast. No notes. Thank you, Sophie.
We're back. Oh, and you know, thinking about fascist death squads makes me think about death squads. You just, which, you just really wanted to do uh, it. I did. I did, okay. Sophie. Uh huh. You know what I love? Making our editor bleep things. I do. I do. I do it. I do it just for you, Sophie. Well, it's really, it's really no big deal for me. I just type an edit note. I know. I know. Just, I just want you. To, I just want you to feel like you're part of the team, Sophie. I Engaged. run. I run the team, Robert. I am <laughs> <True>. the team. <laughs> that doesn't sound like something I'd hear because I, I, Sophie. That's very confusing to me because I take a lot of credit for running the team. So, you know, <laughs> you're, pretty weird. You're sitting on the bench most of the time, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of benches. <laughs> Uh, 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 Babe Ruth. You saw somebody list that on on the Twitter thread that I posted <laughs> about you knowing a sports reference. That doesn't count. Okay, well, let's return to the story. You know, I I, I could do a Babe Ruth segue here, but I'm just not going to. So while well, well, all of this stuff is going on in Italy, the the league is getting up to just other, some other unfathomable atrocities across Latin America. And one of the main engines of these atrocities, it turns out, is the KMT back in Taiwan. Now, now, last episode, we talked about how the KMT was the original Death Squad party. Um, and the Taiwanese spend most of the Cold War using the World Anti-Communist League to sort of export their model of anti-communist Death Squad party abroad. Um, the, the KMT call this, there's sort of like, they have like a method, right? They have this, they have this, they have this thing, and the, the, the method is called political warfare. And this is essentially political warfare is the KMT basically going, OK, so like wh- what if we do what if we did like like a, like almost like a pair over the top parody of communist indoctrination, or, but like at, like to our own people for for anti-communism like they, they, they have they have Soviet style communists, like literally so like commissars whose job it is to like maintain ideological and party discipline in the military. But they're anti-communist this time, like everyone is trained to spy on each we other. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's great. It's like we we've defeated communism by taking every bad aspect of like anything you can find in a communist state and just doing it for for anti communism question mark. They they developed this model of like war called the War of the Masses, which is literally their version of Maoist guerrilla warfare. Mm-hmm. Um, it is awesome how all of these guys like crib, particularly from Mao. Even oh like yeah, a bunch of the ones in the United States because there's like yeah. well. <laughs> Clearly, it works. Yeah, I mean, he was really good. At, he was really, really good at. at uh, he get, was. You got gorilla. You got to. You got to give it. You got to give Mao credit where it's due. Yeah, the man had his areas of expertise. Yeah, it was exactly that, and I, yeah. it, 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 nothing else to do with agriculture or no. Uh, just, yeah. <laughs> oh Famous, boy. famous, famously good at agriculture. <laughs> the guy who reads starving ghosts. Yeah. yeah. So good book. Yeah. The KMT is like, it's like, it's, it's, it's like a right wing parody of what a communist police state is, but it's anti-communist. And and they're, they're also huge on this thing called counter terror. And I think most people listening to this, you're going to hear counter terror and assume that I'm talking about like some counter terrorism thing. And like, kind like that there are counter terrorism stuff that is just counter terror, but counter terror. I've known a lot of professional counter terrorism people and, and hung out with them while they did counter terrorism. And boy, it looks a lot like terrorism. Yeah, uh, well, well, and, and <laughs> we ca- counter terror. Talk like, about the Iraqis. Yeah, counter terrorism forces. One well, some and, other day. The, the, the thing with this right is counter terror. Mm-hmm. Counter terror is just cutting out the whole sort of middleman thing. Counter terror. Yeah. Terror is just the state go literally going. We are the terrorists now. Our plan to win this war is we are going to terrorize the population through kidnapping, assassinations, and massacres until they don't support guerrillas anymore. Hooray! Yeah, then the, this is. I mean, the, the the KMT are like pioneers of this. The the U.S. Army teaches this to people, and ev- everyone we're about to talk about is just obsessed with counterterror. Like this is like, this is like eighty percent of what they do is. Oh my God! What it, what what if we did every atrocity we're accusing our enemies of, but like significantly worse? And, you know, one of the places they learn this stuff is the Political Warfare Academy in Taipei, which is, you know, it starts taking students from militaries all across Latin America. This, Sophie, this is, this why, don't, is, why don't we have a Political Warfare Academy, Sophie? That's it, true. We should have one. We should. We it, should. It's, we should. In, it's in the budget for next year. Okay. All right. Good. That's that's good. 
Mm-hmm. I, I, okay, Sophie, we, we, need, we have to make this very clear right now. I am going to run the Political Warfare Academy so that uh, when all the officers that I train will be personally loyal to me so that I can successfully overthrow Robert in a military coup. Yeah, this seems, this seems like a good plan for me. It's so funny that you think that he would need to be the one that's overthrown when I... I am in charge. Oh no! I've, I've <laughs> always know. just I've I've always just been the figurehead of this. <laughs> oh I'm, no! Here's the thing. <laughs> I, I I want to be the figurehead. I don't want to do the actual work, which is why I'm not overthrowing Sophie. <laughs> no, I want to be like <laughs> that. Seems awful, <laughs> dear God. I, I, I just want to be the uh, the podcast equivalent of oh, what was one of the guys who was just a figurehead? Um, um, late. Um, oh, what's his name? I, I was uh, thinking like, Star Wars, the fake the fake Queen Amidala. Yes, uh, I was going to say with Star Wars, I, I want to be the, um, the, uh, I don't even know enough about Star Wars. Whatever, let's continue. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> so, okay, so th- you have this Taiwanese school, the Americas thing. And like, okay, so th- there are a lot of people who get trained in a lot of like, you know, schools to do counterterror. But like, okay, even people who've been to the school of Americas, of the Americas, like they, they talk to people who come back from political warf- warfare training and are like, those guys got weird. Like they're like too into this. You see, it's like like people who are in death squads. Like we'll talk to we'll like talk about people who are like came back from Taiwan and were really like, those guys are a bit weird. These guys are like those guys are a bit much. And you know the the, the KMT starts like exporting this model. Um, I'm 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 going to quote from inside the league here about like what they were doing. First, through its liaisons in the league, the KMT identified the political party in a Latin country. That was the most militantly anti-communist. The party chosen to be represented in the league is invariably the one that has already proven its anti-communist medal or displays the abil- or displays the ability and will to do so. Following the KMT model, the chosen party establishes a nationwide intelligence and counter-terror network. These paramilitary groups are then gradually incorporated into the nation's armed forces. This is usually accomplished when, in a moment of national crisis, the army turns to these civilian bands for support, or when it is too imp- impotent to curb them. Um, one one of the parties they choose is uh, the MLN in Guatemala, which is founded by this guy named Mario Salvador Alacron, and this is a guy who once God, said a- that sounds like a, a that sounds like an airport Italian restaurant right there. I mean, he's definitely he's definitely fascist enough to be an Italian, mm. um, or but, it, uh, to work at an airport. Yeah, but two incredibly fascist places. Uh, th- this is a guy. Okay, I'm going to read this quote from him. I could perhaps accept the label of fascist, Sandoval told a French reporter in 1981, in the historical sense of the word, were it not for the fact that it refers to a type of socialism, albeit national socialism. So this is a guy who fascism is too socialist for him? (laughs) Okay, buddy. (laughs) It's it's incredible. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, this is the guy who is the uh, the head of the Guatemalan Com- coming chapter. after the Nazi party <laughs> from the right. Yeah, yeah, no, that's literally his thing. And this, this is the guy who's the Guatemalan, like the head of the Guatemalan chapter of the World Anti Communist League for like basically his entire life. Um, Mario Sandoval out of Chrome was he, he's an old school like Guatemalan right winger. Like he he's one of the guys who like did the nineteen the nineteen fifty four CIA back coup against the democratically elected Jacobo Arbenz. So like he's been around. And he's also one of the people behind the White Hand, which is basically the, they're the most feared and bloodthirsty death squad in Colombia until like the army fully takes over and starts doing the, de- the genocide stuff against the Maya population in the 1980s. Now, l- l- lest you think, lest you think Sandoval Autocron did not do the genocide, he absolutely is. Anytime you read anything about the genocide, yeah. like the first part of the genocide is them talking about like the stuff that he did in the 60s and 70s. Um, including just like the white hand, they, they, they have this fairly famous thing where like in the 1970s, there, there's all these like agricultural cooperative cooperatives forming and the white hand. And again, these are just people like forming co-ops and the white hand just walks in and slaughters them all. Um, and I, okay. I, I haven't been able to figure out the exact extent to which he was involved in the full on genocide. that starts in 1980. Um, I mean, there's, there's no way he didn't want the genocide to happen, but the, the thing about it that's weird is that like, his political enemies are in power uh, when the genocide starts. And I mean, you know, th- th- this is in some sense like a reflection of how deeply just like genocidal the entire sort of Guatemalan political class is, right? Because like his enemies get put in power and they still do, they still do a genocide. But I mean, he- he's definitely still killing people. Like there's definitely his escort just still murdering people in the streets. It's kind of unclear exactly how involved he was in the army, just like exterminating people. But you know who was actively involved at like on the level of, of directly backing the military? 
the KMT. So, oh, in, it, yeah, I thought you were doing an ad plug, and I was no, going to no, have no, to no. say the products and services that support this podcast, which no, they were not in that. I mean, probably yes. Mm-hmm. Like, but yeah, the, the KMT specifically here. So, so all right. Well, well, I guess I, I I previewed this last episode when I was talking about um the whole thing about how the U.S. like refused to recognize the People's Republic of China as a legitimate government of China until 1979. And in 1979, the U.S. finally flips and, like, recognizes the PRC as a legitimate government of China instead of recognizing, like, the KMT's rump government in Taiwan. And <laughs> almost all of the world, like... Rump. Yeah. Look. <laughs> like, al- almost all the countries in the world recognize the PRC. Uh, one of the ones that doesn't, I mean, you know, and the, the people who don't, it's like, it's like Rhodesia and, like, South Africa like apartheid South Africa and one of the other countries is Guatemala. And so Taiwan and Guatemala remain are, are incredibly close political allies. Um, the Guatemalan army like sends well, officers. But there's, I mean, they're so have such directly tied interests. Taiwan, Guatemala, both. Well, they, they both really like killing the communists. South Pacific. <laughs> that, that is that, the that's, case. That, yes. That's the thing. They, 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 they really like killing communists. And so, yeah, the Guatemalan army sends a bunch of, Officers to Taiwan's political warfare academy. Taiwan sells them weapons and sends military advisors and trainers to Guatemala. And so there are. I just, I love, you know, it's, there's just, it's always beautiful when, when people come together around shared interests. Yeah. Um, International solidarity between. Solidarity for, okay. Probably. I'm going to start, going to start a rousing chorus of the people's flag is deepest red. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh. And yeah, and so and so one of the things that the, what ends up happening here is that there's a bunch of Taiwanese military advisors. There's there's Taiwanese political warfare pamphlets like floating around everywhere, and all of this is going on when when the government when the, the Guatemalan government starts doing the genocide. LMAO. I, Sorry, the, wait, that's not an LMAO situation. No, it's real bad. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll get to something that's kind of LMAO in a second, but okay. uh, in in the immediate thing here, by by the end of this genocide. The Guatemalan government has killed two hundred thousand people and wiped like just in their entire yeah. like cultures that are gone. No, th- like there are whole languages yeah. that are just wiped out. Like it's like yeah. If you've ever if you ever horrifying. spend any time in Guatemala and talk to some like older people, like there are there are towns, significant chunks of them where like the army is still not allowed in. Yeah, right? like they are effectively like autonomous because um, the genus. Yeah, as a result of like the fucking genocide, like fucking uh, an experience you will regularly have, or at least 10 years ago, you regularly have is like turning a street corner and there's just 40 or 50 people lining a street, all missing legs and arms and hands. Um, And it's not because they all had separate accidents. Um, Yeah, like it's Guatemala's fucking dope as shit. Guatemalan people. Very nice. Uh, The degree to which that country got fucked over. Um, is is one of the things that makes me angriest in in the world. Yeah, anyway. it is it is breathtakingly horrible. And as a side note here, when the UN does the UN eventually in the nineties does does an investigation of the genocide, and uh, Taiwan refuses to cooperate. And to this day, to the best of my knowledge, the documents about exactly what Taiwan was doing during the genocide are still classified. So oh, good. That's fun. That's great. Um, yeah, so Mario Sandoval Alacron's recruitment into the league, like it wasn't just about sort of Taiwanese diplomatic relations. He's brought in as, and they literally call him the grandfather, the godfather of death squads. Like everyone just calls him the godfather. It's <sighs> fucking Italians. Okay, sure. Yeah, and and yeah. He, so and, you know, so he's brought in to train other death squad leaders, and one of those guys is Roberto. See, this guy's a French name. I think it's I think it's Debusson, something like that. Debusson, Roberto Debusson, and he so he mm-hmm. he he is a guy who would say things like, and I he said this to a journalist, quote, "You Germans are were very intelligent. You realize that the Jews were responsible for the spread of communism, and you began oh to kill them." Oh boy, yeah. Um, and so his nickname is Blowtorch Bob, and uh, oh, Robert, Jesus. yeah. Do you want to yeah. guess why his nickname is Blowtorch Bob? I I really don't want to guess. 
I'm, yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to be fair with you. I, 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 will, I would I prefer will, not to guess on that. I, I, I will just tell you it's because uh, he was famous for just using blowtorch to torture prisoners. Um, oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Cool. Yeah, he's he's this a is actually guy. a similarity that he has with uh, with our, our producer, Sophie. I don't use a blowtorch. OK, well. It's a can of hairspray with a lighter, Sophie. It works similarly. Well, at least get your facts straight if you're going to accuse me of something. This is this is how we handle problems like that time. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this joke. Neither do I. Please continue. So Roberto de Bussion, like, so he, he goes to the league's meeting in Buenos Aires in 1980, and he asks for help running death squads. And he, he becomes Sandoval Alacron's like protege. And this, he, he also goes to Taiwan and spends time uh, at the KMT's political warfare academy. Uh, here, here's, here's from inside the league about his time there. In an interview with a French reporter in 1987, De Bousson said that the, the courses he took in Beito, which is uh, Beito's a, a district in Taiwan. Yeah, where, Beito. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where a bunch of people who came over from China like wind up. Uh, th- this is where the academy is. Uh, in 1977 was, quote, the best class I ever studied. Those lessons are what I applied when I organized. We started organizing civic groups. Political war is different from military war. It is different in its space. The political war is defined in 360 degrees. The military war is a war in space, but there is one military front, one theater of operation. In the military war, the young people could participate, young men especially. In political warfare, everyone participates. Political warfare, the Abusion said, is psychological warfare against the enemy. I started psychological warfare against the communists. I denounced their program, their treason, their infiltrations into government. The political warfare was a complement to the armed fight. And, and so... Taiwan is not the only country that's supporting this guy. Um, at that same league meeting in 1980, he meets with uh, representatives of the Argentinian police state to like ask for more training to like fund his death squads. And you know we should go back to Operation Condor for a second because remember, like th- this is this is how Condor started, right? Condor starts with a bunch of people at at uh, CIL meetings, like coming together and going, "Hey, we should go communist together." And You know, the thing about Condor is that Condor had originally been a project of what's called the Southern Cone, which is like a region of Latin America covering like Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, sometimes like Paraguay and part of Brazil. Um, And what what, what this 1980 meeting of the CIL was doing was exporting a new version of Condor North to Central America. This is sending it to El Salvador, to Honduras, to Guatemala, to Nicaragua. Um, Here's from the predatory state. The 1980 WACL meeting, uh, well, Anti-Communist League meeting in Buenos Aires seemed to have been a defining event in exporting the Condor system from the Southern Cone. The meeting brought together various right-wing forces, intelligence agents, and military uh, officers, including many involved in Condor to strategize about ways to accelerate the world anti-communist crusade. In March 1980, the Sandinista media announced that the CIA was interfering in Nicaragua and El Salvador and training former National Guard troops in Honduras. So De Bussion, like gets his death squad training, and a year later in 1981, he founds Arena, which is his own sort of Salvadorian death squad party. And then he, he also does something uh, that puts him in a very rare category of bastard. He kills a saint. Ooh, had they been sainted when he killed them? Or no, was he, getting well, he, murdered he, yeah, part of what made him a saint? Getting, getting murdered is how he became a saint. Dope. Which well, then is, he did the guy, I mean, kind of did him a favor. Yeah, maybe. I, I feel like he would rather have been alive than a dead saint. But, well, I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I, 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 will not, I will not claim to understand the mind of the high-level Catholic clergy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, I don't know if I'm I mean, mad I'm, at I'm, that I'm going to guess not. Because that's like being the... LeBron James. Okay, now we're Catholicism. just repeating names. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got to give you more. We got to give you more names so you have better talking points. I just need to watch that Adam Sandler movie again. The okay. one with the footballs and the tall guy. And he's Spanish. It's a good movie. You should watch it. It's a pretty good movie, Sophie. So that, that, that saint is a guy you might, you probably actually have heard of. That's is Archbishop Oscar Romero. Who, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He lived He's a the, long life. Yeah. Yeah. He, he lived a long life until 1980 when Debussy had him assassinated. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, as, as McSherry points out, like his assassination really looks like a condor killing. Like mm-hmm. it, it has, it has all of the sort of elements of it. 
And, you know, so Dan Busian, like, has taken his lessons to heart really fast. And this whole project that he's doing, this whole thing, he's trying to get everyone who's been doing the sort of, like, training desk squads to, like, help him make his own desk squads. This, this works incredibly well. His desk squads, which are trained by Argentina and Taiwan, mentored by Mario Sandoval Crone, they kill something like 40,000 people during this Holy El Salvadorian shit. civil war. Yeah. Like, and f- 40,000 is like a kind, is a kind of low estimate. It's possible it was much, I've, I've seen, I've seen people blame, I mean, okay, so like, th- there's a question as to like how many people were killed by the death squads and how many people were actually killed by the military. And I, I've seen estimates that are like 20,000 people higher than this because they're attributing like all of the people killed in the, yeah, it's, it's De- death squad numbers are like when people ask me how many beers I've had at like three thirty in the morning numbers, right? You're going to be off by a margin. Yeah. And, and you're going to be under. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're almost certainly, you almost certainly there's more of them. And you know, so th- this is uh, what we call in the trade extremely bad. Now, Robert, as you well know, Ronald Reagan and his staff sold weapons to Iran to secure prisoner releases and fund Nicaraguan death squads. But do you know who else sold weapons and questionable arms deals to fund death squads? Our sponsor is the... Uh-huh, that's right. Uh, with the... We believe pandas are good. And so is arming paramilitary groups. Yeah. And I, people, 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 I, I, I think most people will think that I'm joking here. I'm actually literally not. They, they actually literally did this. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, go, go, fine. go read the BuzzFeed article. Yeah. And great. it was seven countries, fine. death squads in seven. I think it was seven countries. I haven't, I haven't looked yeah, into this in too long, but Chris, I don't like death squads being in seven countries funded by the. Yes. That's how you sound. All right. Here's ads. We're back. Do you, do you like my my Chris voice, Chris? Yeah, I, f- I feel I feel like I feel like I, I feel like my register is slightly di- slightly higher yeah, than that. It's, it, it is. I'm, I'm going to be honest. The same as my Sophie voice. I, I have one voice that I do for people. This is why you're a professional. This is why I'm the professional. This is exactly right. This is why I'm the I'm the I'm the 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 leader of this junta. Speaking of juntas, actually not speaking of juntas, mm-hmm. I don't think, I don't think it's, a, well, they're, 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 I guess the Argentinian junta is going to be involved later, but mm-hmm. w- when we left off, the U.S. was about to get involved in a series of incredibly sketchy arm deals with Iran and Hezbollah in order to fund death squads, but, uh, but that's but, what you like to hear. Unfortunately, Wait, b- b- no, before we can, no, it, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's not. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I guess I guess you could probably find people on the left who are like Iran Contra was good because they were funding because they were giving weapons to Iran. But then there's the whole funding the Contras thing. So it's kind of like. It is fun. There's a lot of like <laughs> when you like look at, I don't know, the uh, the kind of lazy left wing analysis of of the like the tanky style, like shitty left wing analysis where like, you know, everyone wants, you know, they're clear set good guys and bad guys. And yeah. then when you look at the reality, which is like, boy. China and the United States wound up backing a lot of the same militant groups during the Reagan years. It yep. kind of kept happening over and over again. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> Weird that yeah. the Reagan administration. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Yeah. It's 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 a good time. Um yeah, but before we before we can get any further into Iran Contra, we have to introduce the last major World Anti Communist League figure we're talking about, and also a Rand Contra co conspirator, Major General John K. Siglab. So John, John K. Siglab is, he is the most spooked out spook who ever tortured an innocent civilian. Um, he, he, boy, there is competition for that title. Uh, what, wait, wait to, okay, I, I'm not even gonna, like, I, I literally can't do his entire resume here because it would take up, like, four, like, like, 40 to 50 percent of the entire episode would just be me reading his resume um he, he starts as an oss guy behind nazi lines in world war ii and then he gets transferred to the pacific to teach chinese forces guerrilla tactics against, against the japanese and uh would that he had died a hero there because his next posting is as the cia desk chief for china in 1949 um somehow and, and i th- there's a lot of his things in his career that i read and don't make any sense to me um he Somehow also was involved in uh, the establishment of the Ranger Training Center at Fort Benning. Um, he then becomes the, de- the deputy station chief of the CIA in South Korea during the Korean War. And this is the thing I don't understand at all. So he's the deputy station chief of the CIA, right? He somehow also is commanding a combat battalion? I have no idea how this works. Don't ask me. It's baffling. I, 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 I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, that's a little odd. Okay. I, 
I, I have no idea. Um, so this, this guy is just like the spook spook. Um, he, here's from inside the league about what he got up to next. As commander of the Joint Unconventional Warfare Task Force, known as MAXOG, great acronym by the way, MAXOG, really? Singlab was one of the on-site commanders of Operation Phoenix, the American Directed Assassination and Counterterror Program. And then Robert, do, do you remember that episode that uh, Garrison did on Eel Horse? I do, I do, I do. Yeah, it, it where, has, where, it has. Uh, Although I, I will tell you, a, a a fan came up to me during one of the live events I did recently and informed uh, me that there's a specific kind of um, antibiotic that they give. Th- this fan is a horse, a horse person. Um, she told me there's an antibiotic that they give horses that uh, if you eat the meat, it will give you horrible cancer immediately. So, oh, yeah, that's that's going to that's going to limit the number of I was mm. going to just steal a horse from somebody's horse farm, um, you know, just capture one horse and eat it. But now I feel like I have to be careful to make sure it hasn't been given this this antibiotic that will turn it into cancer meat because I mean, that'll that, probably be bad. Yeah, but on the other hand, what what a way to go! I I I, I ate cancer <laughs> inducing horse meat. Horse cancer. meat. Yeah, I, I like, got a horse meat cancer. Like, like th- this is this this is something somebody like seventeen forty two dies of. Yeah, Chris yeah. actively encouraging Robert to eat cancer meat so that he can overthrow him. <laughs> I was going to make Garrison eat most of Plastic. the horse. This this is called political warfare, Sophie. I Got know. Him. I see it happening, and I'm and I'm proud. <laughs> Yeah, doing the a horse meat gladio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, the, the, you remember the part about the? Uh, so the, the the thing I remember about I uh, uh, the that that episode of, uh, about eel horse was I. Uh, Garrison stopping me after a meeting and saying, uh, "Chris, have you have you ever is there have you ever heard of an ancient Chinese remedy of people sticking eels up their asses?" Mm. And the the only thing I could think of that involved East Asia and people with eels was the thing about how uh, the uh, pe- people people would rape people with eels in, uh, during the Vietnam War. Oh yes, yeah. So that was this guy. That's oh, him. Good. He's the guy raping okay. people with eels. Um. And and you know and this this is this is this is this guy. The thing he's doing, Project Phoenix. Their job is specifically to assassinate civilians. It's to find civilians who are who are sympathetic to North Vietnam, to like North Vietnam, and just kill them. And that that that's what he's doing. Um, a, a bunch of the work from Project Phoenix, which again, like he's the guy running. Um, it, it finds its way into this army manual that's passed out of the School of the Americas. That's about like how to do terrorism and how to assassinate people. And eventually, that gets leaked, and there's this huge scandal. But it doesn't affect him at all. Um. He he eventually goes back to the army at some point. And this is everything. He, he he flips randomly back and forth between the CIA, the army, and like the Rangers. And I, I don't I, I don't know what's going on with this guy's career. It's it's incredibly bizarre spook shit. Um But and so he, he he's made the chief of staff of US forces in South Korea, but he gets like incredibly pissed off that Carter wants to pull troops out. So he like publicly denounces the president. And Carter's just like, you can't do that like you're a general you know, and so he just fires him but this of course makes him like incredibly popular with the u.s right and he eventually helps found a new american chapter of the world anti-communist league and becomes the head of the league uh he, here, here's some inside the league the new american chapter the united states council for world freedom uh us cwf terrible acronym terrible was acronym. born yeah like cal cal is a good acronym they USCWF sure. terrible zero Trash. out of ten. Jesus Christ, come on! So the 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 USCWF was born, facilitated by a loan of nearly twenty thousand dollars from Taiwan. What Sing Lab was able to create was a body of Man, powerful. You could really make money go further back then. Oh yeah, no, like twenty twenty thousand dollars. You you could you could do a Rand Contra with twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, like I mean, Sophie and I recently put twenty thousand dollars into a, a series of militant endeavors, and we barely assassinated the former prime minister. But oh, I'm, hey, uh, podcast finish <laughs> episodes. Oop, oh not even not even going to make the joke. Got us I was in trouble make. on that one. <laughs> Nearly got us in trouble on that one. Pulled it out though. Nobody, nobody. No got words. Infected. We're fine. Just dodging, We're fine. dodging prosecution like Neo in the Matrix. That's right. <laughs> <sighs> Boy, howdy, let's continue Dodging this. prosecution <laughs> like Shinzo Abe didn't dodge. Anyway, Robert! Continue. What? Chris, 
Please. So Sing Lab is able to create like a powerful and respected body of American conservatives, the likes of which the league had never seen before. As the US CWF grew, this new league chapter came to include high ranking former officers of the American Army and Intelligence Community. Lieutenant General Daniel O. Graham, former director of the Defense Intelligence Agency, became its vice chairman, while a retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, Albert Kion, was its treasurer. On the advisory board was General Lewis Walt, former commander of Marine Corps forces in Vietnam, and Ray Sleeper, retired Air Force Colonel. So th- this new American like oh, man. chapter, you know, somebody needs to do an REM song, like a like a parody of an REM song <laughs> about Ray Sleeper using the the REM song Day Sleeper to talk about yeah. this. Anyway, that that is not the REM parody. I thought you were going to go for that. That, oh, that no. was that well, was better yeah, than else? I expected. Ray Sleeper, Day Sleeper, yeah, which is a great REM song. Don't get me wrong, but it would also be a funny. Anyway, I, somebody I was, out there can figure it out. Yeah, well, let someone else do that. Um, and you know, th- th- so th- this is like the most fetid out organization I've ever encountered. And um, Sync Lab had already been a, a, like a liaison to the Reagan administration. Um, in 1979, he and another CIA guy named Daniel Graham went to Guatemala to convince uh, Reagan uh, to back yes. the government. Mm-hmm. So Reagan does, and uh, guess what? Death squad killings immediately increase. And, you know, everyone else in the Republican Party sort of falls in line. They're like, oh, this is fine. And uh, here, here's, here's what happened next. The election of Reagan coincided with the bloodiest outbreak of Guatemalan death squad actions in history. Almost 500 deaths a month, almost all attributed to the right, were being recorded by the American were being reported by the American embassy. But even that figure was considered low by most other monitoring groups. Piles of mutilated corpses were being discovered every morning throughout the country, and a concerted campaign to eliminate the centrist parties was underway in Guatemala City. From July 1980 to June 1981, 76 leaders of the Christian Democratic Party and 10 officials of the Social Democratic Revolutionary Front were assassinated. Most were murdered by gunfire from passing cars, the trademark of the MLN. And this is all happening at the same time as the genocide, which Reagan is like, yeah, no, go ahead and do this. Um, and so Re- Reagan's, Reagan's big thing is that he wants to expand death squad activity everywhere. And his primary target is Nicaragua. Um, and we, I guess we should probably explain why they hate Nicaragua so much. So in 1979, the leftist Sandinistas finally ousted the U.S.-backed Somoza dictatorship and tried to end the literally centuries-old reign of genocidal landowning oligarchs. And this is, the, you know, because because all of the rest of the Latin American ruling class is also genocidal landowning oligarchs. Uh, this sparks yeah. a lot of what we've been talking about. <laughs> yeah, like the, the, the genocide in Guatemala, the massacres in El Salvador, a lot of this stuff was, was triggered by the right-wingers just sort of like seeing someone else being like, Hey, maybe, maybe you guys shouldn't have the total literally power over life and death and the ability to murder anyone you want in order to keep your land. And they just, they just lose it and start doing genocides. And the, the another country that they turn into a war zone is Honduras. Now the, 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 the man largely responsible for this, at least initially was Gustavo Alvarez Martinez, a school of the Americas graduate who was also trained by the Argentinian junta and their own sort of dirty war stuff. Um, Gustavo Alvarez Martinez is floating around the same sort of like CAL milieu as like all the other death squad guys we've talked about. Um, and at, at that same 1980 conference of the league in Buenos Aires, he asks and gets help for, from, from the Argentinian army. But what, what, what makes, what makes um, Gustavo Alvarez Martinez different from the other death squad leaders that we've talked about is that, you know, cause so he's absolutely doing death squads along the sort of Argentinian dirty war model, like right down to like, like right down to the, the sort of Argentinian like triple threat of kidnapping, electroshocks for torture, and throwing people out of helicopters. But he's also attempting to get training for a bunch of Nicaraguan like ex uh, Nicaraguan National Guard people who'd fled across the border into Honduras after like losing the war. And this is enormously successful. I like literally everyone is just like falling over themselves to train these people to to a new army of Contras. And in 1981, he gets made the head of Honduras' armed forces. And this is where all the sort of threads start to converge. Bo- both the Chileans and the Argentinians help Alvarez Martinez train a unit that becomes known as Battalion 3-16, which was in charge of killing, quote, enemies of the state. After uh, Alvarez Martinez made formal of sort of secret contact with the Contras inside Nicaragua itself, he starts like coordinating intelligence with them. And the Argentinians also helped start like training the army of Contras in the, in the camp in Honduras. Um, the, Argent- the Argentinians also start working even closer with the CIA, which is pretty incredible, but they, they gets closer. Um, here's from Predatory States. General Guillermo Suarez Mason, the powerful commander of Argentina's 1st Army Corps, was instrumental in the creation of the Extraterritorial Task Force. 
or the GTE, a, a unit of Battalion 601 that carried out secret intelligence operations outside of Argentina. Sanchez Rissier said that the GTE was based in Florida with the authorization of the CIA. Soros Mason himself presided over the 4th Congress of the Latin American Anti-Communist League, the World Anti-Communist League affiliates, in 1980, and the, WA, the World Anti-Communist League reportedly donated $8 million to pay for the deployment of Argentine officers to Central America. Um, Soros Mason fled Argentina after transition to democracy in 1984, and, according to one human rights organization, Oliver North arranged a false visa for him to enter the U.S. North had been discussing with him... Uh, North had been discussing with him the formation of a continental counterinsurgency force, a concept that, again, evokes Operation Condor. So this is great. The, the, the Argentini, Ar- Argentina's assassination unit is running out of Miami. Uh, <laughs> Oliver North is giving this guy, like, who almost certainly would have just been, like, shot. Uh, like, yeah, enters into the U.S. <sighs> you know, what's and- fun about Oliver North, now that you're saying all this, is that I watched him on TV every night on Fox News when I was a kid. Yeah. My it's parents, fun. big Ollie North fans. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great that he did so many crimes and he's just still around today doing bad stuff. So not, not, not wanting to be left out of this death squad party. Uh, Taiwan also sends military advisors to train the Contras in the camps in Honduras. I mean, it, it's really like everyone is there. Like the Moonies are there. The Soldier of Fortune magazine is flying weapons in like... Well, Sig Labs, hey, like there, and a couple of them get killed in the helicopter, get yeah, shot down. Which is That's one of my funny. Fav- Yeah, there's a really, <laughs> really fun story of some Soldier of Fortune guys getting the fuck murked out. Of yeah, them. It's, it's amazing. It's pretty dope. <laughs> um, also, there's a pretty good uh, song from a Canadian country music artist I like called "Student Visas." That's about this period. Check it out. I don't know. I just, I, I always just like, I just like, I want to imagine like, like just think about like, what is it like in these camps? It's like, like Bohe Pac who's like the moon's Lieutenant is like showing up there. And you know, he see like, he just like sees some guy from, uh, I don't know. He sees like some CAA guy. And it's like, Hey Bob, I haven't seen you since, since we did the, since we did the cocaine coup in Bolivia. It's like all, every single person who's ever funded a death squad is just simultaneously running around these camps. And it's like, and, and you know, part of, part of what's going on here is that SIG lab, like, through through the sort of CAL networks we've been talking about that, that are funding all these death squads, like gets the Reagan administration like fully in touch with 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 involved in trade with training these contracts as well. Um, the Reagan administration is so heavily involved in this stuff that uh, Mario Salvador Alacrón literally shows up at his inaugural ball in 1981, which is great. <laughs> and the CIA, meanwhile, is so heavily involved in the contra camps in Honduras that quoting McSherry. Alvarez, who's, who's the, 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 the Honduran intelligence guy who's now heading the military, running this stuff, was so close to the CIA station chief in Honduras, Douglas Winters, that Winters asked him to be the godfather of his adopted child. Oh. Ronald, <laughs> it's incredible. And uh, R- Ronald Reagan later awarded him the Legion of Merit in 1983. <laughs> so ah. this is love, love Ronald Reagan, a guy who never did anything wrong. And, and, and until 1984, this was going great. And, and by going great, I mean the CIA, Argentina, Taiwan, and the Moody's are like having a great time partying in the jungle and like murdering communists. Uh, in Honduras itself, the Nicaraguan Contras have just straight up turned into their own death squads who are murdering people. You know, okay, so like, like they're, they're a death squad that's supposed to murder people in Nicaragua, right? But they're also just murdering people in Honduras. And then they also just like start killing people like in the, in the, uh, the, the Nicaraguan refugee camps in Honduras. So... This is a good time. And, and back, at, back in the U.S., Congress actually does something for once ever and is like, Reagan, you can't give money to these guys who are burning children alive. Which, you know, fairly sensible thing. And so immediately the everyone... The woke mob comes for the child burners. Yeah, look, look. If burning, and bur- burning children is a... Is a uh, oh, God, I can't, remember, I can't remember the name of the thing that... Uh, part of American tradition and history. It is a, it R- is a strong American, American culture. Yeah. yeah well, what, well, you're not supposed to burn children to death. Who's since whom? Since when? That's what I got to ask. Yeah. Our, our forefathers burned children to death. Their you're forefathers right burned they children did. to death. Multiple and by God, one of these days we'll burn children to death. Yeah. If we're lucky. It'll be great. <laughs> no. So. Wow. Sophie. Damn. Can't Sophie, believe you so, let Sophie, that happen. No, noted Falling anti-American. You are falling down on the job like Scotty 
Pippin? <laughs> Unfortunately, this is a visual gag, but uh, Robert just got a towel thrown at him. It was mm-hmm. extremely mm-hmm. funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of our one of our corporate mandates is that someone always has to be in the room with me to get angry when I say things that I shouldn't. <laughs> Ah, uh, I did that with my mind. That was so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you really Professor Xavier'd that one. That's another famous basketball player. Oh my God. Okay, <laughs> Chris. So a- as we talked about in our episodes with the Moonies, this is the moment that Reverend Moon truly becomes the father of Iran Contra by personally throwing money and supplies at the Honduran camp to like keep them in the fight when the CIA couldn't. And... This is also where John Siglap, like currently the head of the World Anti-Communist League, becomes incredibly important. Um, he starts doing this series of fundraisers all over the world. He like goes to Honduras. He's like in these Contra camps. He's like flying in weapons and supplies with the Soldier of Fortune guy. And, you know, he is actually raising some money from the Contras. But this whole thing is really a charade. And this is this is a key part of, of how a Rand Contra works, because, you know, you have this figurehead guy who any CIA money can just sort of like go through. And, it'll, and, you know, it looks to all the world like, oh, hey, this guy's raising money for freedom fighters. And, you know, as as like kind of silly as this whole thing is, this part of the operation is so successful that it, like no one finds out about it until like the Iran end of Iran Contra falls apart completely and people start like following the money trails around. And Sync Lab is like deeply involved in this enough that like he's like his liaison like to the Reagan administration is he's just talking to Oliver North. And, and the, the, you know, during the later investigation, there, there's a real attempt to go after his organization, the, US, the, the United States Council for World Freedom, which, again, is the U.S. chapter of the World Anti-Communist League. They try to go after it. They, they don't quite get it, but, you know, it's in the documents. Um, and, you know, wh- wh- while, while all of this is going on, um, Siglab's, like, trying to do a rebrand of the League because it turns out that having a bunch of people who, if you talk to them, will immediately start screaming about Zionist communism and Jewish conspiracies is... I mean, I guess now it's good for recruiting, but like back then it was not great for recruiting people. And, you know, the, 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 the goal of this is to bring in more mainstream conservatives. And one of the one of these mainstream conservatives is John McCain, who is again, better known for other work, like telling a reporter, quote, I hate the gooks. I will hate them as long as I live. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well. Yeah. He said that uh, no one ever talks about it because, uh, you know, uh, uh, anti-Asian racism wasn't real until 2020. It was invented yep. by Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't like the previous two people they ran before him were also like unbelievably fucking racist. And so, okay, but like the, the, this whole sort of like, like campaign to like clean the league up, like, you know, it, it does do one thing, which is that Siglab finally kicks out the CAL. He doesn't, I think it's like 1983. He like finally kicks them out. But, you know, all the death squad people like somehow keep showing up to their meetings. The only people who actually get t- kicked out are the techos because they're just like too openly anti-Semitic. Um, h- here's some inside the league about how like deeply these changes actually went. Still, there were problems in selling this new and improved league for not very much has changed. John Kosak, the Belarusian Nazi collaborator, remains chairman of his delegation. The Croatian Liberation Movement, the international Eustasha Brotherhood that Ante Pavlovic established in Argentina in 1956, was still the official Croatian League chapter, as was the Bulgarian National Front which had been formed in 1947 by the Bulgarian legion, legionnaires who had advocated the extermination of the nation's Jews. Mario Salvador Alcron, the godfather of Central American death squads, was in attendance. And although Yaroslav Stetsko, the Ukrainian premier who had officiated over the murder of approximately 7,000 residents of Lvov in one week in 1940, uh, 1941, was too ill to come, his wife, Slava, was there to represent the Ukrainian Nazi collaborators. Oh, good. I was really worried for a second when you said yeah. she was too ill to come, but I'm glad she, no, was, no. she was able to make that. Yeah, that yeah. And, you know, so th- this new league, it, it's exactly the same as the old league, except the scale of operations increases, right? Um, par- alongside running Iran-Contra, like anti-communist rebel groups from across the world just start showing up and placing orders for weapons. Um, I'm pretty sure they give weapons to Charles Taylor, although that one was slightly sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's fun. Um, they they definitely send weapons to uh a bunch of re- of of like right wing like 
incredibly weird guys in Mozambique who they give like surface to air missiles, guns and bazookas. Um, and if you remember how we talked about how Reverend Moon backed Pol Pot and how that aid was like mostly propaganda, yep. but a bit of money. So the, 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 the same Cambodian soldiers ally with Pol Pot, like come to the league and the league just like gives them a bunch of guns and weapons. So they're, oh. they're, they're funding, they're funding Pol Pot. Uh, the league is also like constantly raising money for the Mujahideen in Afghanistan, where Siglab also winds up doing like liaisoning for the CIA. And it really looks like this whole thing is sort of just accelerating by, into a new. By the way, quick note, because this can't be referenced enough. Everybody likes to say, oh, when we armed the Mujahideen, we were just giving weapons to the Taliban. No, we were giving weapons to the people who molested children on such a grand scale that it allowed for the takeover of, by, of Afghanistan by the Taliban. Get it yeah. right, folks. Yeah. That was the Pakistanis who were... Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it, it, it looks like like you know, it looks like this whole thing is accelerating into like a new, even more bloody phase of the Cold War. And you know, th- this is what the the authors of Inside the authors of Inside the League are writing this in 1986. And you know, this is what this is what they think is going to happen. You know, the the League is going to play an even more central role in the Cold War. And then they won. The Soviet Union withdrew from Afghanistan. They collapsed. The Sandinistas fell. The Mozambique mm-hmm. abandoned Marxist Leninism. Vietnam, which was already on its way to becoming a capitalist market economy, withdrew from Cambodia, which is also now a capitalist market <laughs> yes. economy. The the, 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 the now guys, Vietnam's glorious people security forces regularly train with American police officers from a variety yep. of states, including yep. Oregon. Yeah, and also I I I I, I, I I'm, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm about ninety percent sure they get trained by the Israelis too because it's oh, great. Yeah. I yeah. mean, honestly, <laughs> yeah. Who, um, who doesn't? Am I right? Yeah. Um, so it's it's all good. I do want to make one quick note, which is that Mozambique is my favorite country in terms of like the word for people who come from that country, because I find saying Mozambican to be incredibly satisfying. Spelling it's even better. Oh, I fucking love that word. I don't know why. It just feels good. Try it. Try it, it for yourself. Say and spell Mozambican. It's, I cannot it just, spell it just feels, Mozambique. It just, I, Cannot. It feels good. I'm it's sorry. easier to spell Mozambican than it is Mozambique because you don't have that weird fucking Q in there. Check it out, people. Spell Mozambican. Improve your day. That's not a joke. That's just a real thing. Yeah, so the, 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 the guys who assassinate Yugoslavian ambassadors live long enough to see Yugoslavia fall. The, 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 the small guerrilla groups that were in Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras are all exterminated. Uh, the government that comes after Pinochet private, privatizes even more state-owned companies than Pinochet did. Uh, Reverend Moon opens a car company in North Korea. Uh, China is now the world's second largest capitalist economy, and like even Cuba has special economic zones. So... Yeah, adrift a, a in this sort of new world of their own creation, the League changes its name to the World League for Freedom and Democracy. But the organization is a rump of its former self, but it, it still meets in Taiwan, even though Taiwan, like, overthrew the KMT. But, you know, it still meets there. But again, like, the, the, the like, you know, the, 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 e- even Taiwan, where, like, the, K- the, the KMT's, like, built dictatorship fell. It's like, well, there's still a capitalist economy. And... That's because we live in their world now. We, we, we live in the world where all of these people, all of these fucking Nazis got everything that they ever wanted, and it sucks ass. And it Yay. is going to stay that way. It's going to stay that way unless. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, here's the thing, folks. You know how to stop this from happening? shoot all of the Nazis when you win the war yeah, instead of hiring them. Yeah, the Nazis when like, it's the same lesson with Confederates, right? Yeah. Like the real, the lesson, there's, there's a, the lesson from World War II and the lesson from the U.S. Civil War is the same, which is when you beat a bunch of racists in a war, kill a lot more of them than you think you're gonna need to. You're gonna wanna not kill as many of them because oh, we're gonna forgive and move on. No, kill a fuckload more of them. Like, everybody the, sit down what, right after what, you win the war. Sit, this, sit down. What is this fucking voice you keep doing? It's so bizarre. What? It's my voice that I do when I'm, when like, I'm, when I'm being like, other people. It's like zombie Mickey Mouse. I'm Sophie. I don't like Robert's voices. Hoodly doodly do. That's how you sound. <laughs> <laughs> Robert's video with another towel. <laughs> I know. I did that with my mind again. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> What's really key is after you say whatever you're saying in the fake voice for the person, then you got to say, hoodly doodly do. Mm hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Well, this was a great episode, Chris. Um, thank you 
for writing it and for uh, allowing me to have a vacation where I went and shot machine guns in the desert. Um, that was necessary. And yeah, uh, seems, thank you all yeah. at home for listening to the podcasts that we make. And until next time, remember, I am the Jesus Christ of podcasting. How's that, Sophie? We you're, good? You're, you're, you're fired. I've really been on one today. Yeah, I've I don't really, know what really it been, is. I've really been wild in today. I don't know what's what's going on. <laughs> vacation Robert is a, is a yeah. mood. It's a vibe. I've been having a vacation. I'm on a pretty heavy dose of crate. I'm going to be honest with you here. Um, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Anyways. Vacation, uh, all I ever wanted. Wow. Vacation had to get away. Does Vacation Robert vacation, does Vacation Robert have a book to plug by doo. chance? No. Yes. Vacation Robert has a book to plug. What 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 book is Vacation Robert plugging? That's a great question, Sophie. Scholars debate what book I wrote, but a lot of them seem to believe that it's called After the Revolution, and that yeah. you can find it if you if you Google AK Press After the Revolution. Uh, or if you go to the thing that I'm looking up by trying to f- find where it is on our subreddit, because somebody said that I should plug these guys and, and they were right. Um, you can get it everywhere, like all of the places that that books are sold. So if you're somewhere in the middle of nowhere, you can you can have the, the Jeff Bezos shit get them or you can look it up on. Fuck. I'm, I'm having to scroll quite a bit. Disaster. Oh my God. You can do what a, this. What, well, a, what a what a massive failure for me. Well, while you do that, I'm gonna plug our, our our good friend Props New Cold Brew at terraformcoldbrew.com. Oh hell yeah, yeah, definitely check that shit out. It's gorgeous. And uh, and listen to Hood listen. Politics and stream Props music and follow Prop. This has just turned into like a huge prop plug. I think it's bookshop.org. Yeah, go to bookshop.org. You can find my book there. You can probably find Prop's book there. Let me look it up. Let me yeah. look up Prop's book on book, Prop's bookshop.org. Prop's book is also called Terraform. Let me look up Terraform on bookshop.org, which connects you to indie bookstores. Boy, there's actually... Yes, Prop's book is on there, along with the book Terraforming Mars by some guy I've never heard of. <laughs> Shout out to that and guy. And the book terraform in action by scott winkler which has what looks like an ottoman janissary on the front not really sure what's going on there anyway bunch of weird books go check them out behind the bastards is a production of cool zone media for more from cool zone media visit our website coolzonemedia.com or check us out on the iHeartRadio app apple podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts